Well, grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Today uh, is a Reformation Day. It's kind of like a, a Lutheran Independence Day is the way I always uh, imagine it. It's the day that we Lutherans especially are proud. We hold our heads up high. We go, church, you're welcome. Because this is the day that we celebrate that Martin Luther nailed the 95 Theses on the door of the church in Wittenberg and started a conversation that led to the Reformation, that led to the reforming of the church at large. Luther was the catechist in this. And he went on to say a lot of things besides the 95 Theses. He, he talked about in the Heidelberg Disputation, which is one of my favorite documents, um, he talked about the theology of the cross rather than the theology of glory. Rather than trying to give purpose and meaning and glory to everything, we should call it what it is. Life sucks sometimes. And thanks be to God we have the cross that in the end we will have victory. Of course, at the Diet of Worms, uh, Luther is famous to have said these words, which we don't know whether he said or not. Here I stand, I can do no other. We love attributing these words to Luther. It's a perfect storybook response. Whether he said it or not, we don't know, but it makes for a good story, and we can do that. He wrote the large and small catechism, uh, and these small catechisms, are, of course, are the basis of our uh, confirmation program for years and years. They were given to fathers to, to teach their families how to be a Christian. And of course, the phrase that comes up most often in that is this phrase, this is most certainly true, right? Ah, you know it. Many of you may be memorized parts of that, and it was always nice to have a phrase you could finish strong with, this is most certainly true. And all throughout the church, especially the Lutheran church this Sunday, uh, you, that phrase is going to be used a ton. This is most certainly true. Uh, but of all the things Luther wrote, I think it's his final words that maybe remind us where his heart was the most. It's simply these words. We are beggars. This is true. So this is what we believe the last words that were written on a piece of paper, actually, that Luther kept in his pocket. And when he died, it was there. Which I imagine means he probably carried a piece of paper with those words on it with him all the time. Of all the great thoughts, of all the things he did, this is the thing he needed to be reminded of. We are beggars. This is true. So we might ask, why is this such an important phrase? Well, for Luther, it shows and reminds us why the Reformation even happened. See, Luther, as a, a man, understood in ways that, that I can't possibly imagine. He understood the weight of his sin. He knew that he was not right with God. He knew that he was not living the life he should. Even as a monk, even doing the very things that the church had told him, do these things and you're good, he still felt he wasn't good enough. And it was that weight on him that drove him to the Reformation, that drove him to these thoughts. And so you can still see, even in his last words, that was weighing on him. We are beggars. We have nothing to bring. We have no value of our own. We are beggars. We have nothing. And yet, yet we are still saved by grace alone. So this idea of this beggar is really important for us to remember today. For lots of reasons, especially for our Lutheran pride that we puff our chest out on this day. Perhaps maybe we need to remember we are beggars too. I was thinking about what happens when we come across a beggar. Somebody who's on the street. 
What are our thoughts? How do we interact with them? What's our perspective? What are our assumptions? What are our actions? I think if we're honest, maybe some of these are some of the thoughts that go through your head when you think about somebody who's a beggar, someone who's homeless, someone who's out on the street on their own. Maybe we think, how did they get into this mess? How'd they get themselves into this mess? Maybe they didn't work hard enough. Maybe they, they took a gamble and they wasted things, opportunities, and now they're on their own. Sometimes we blame the person for what's happened and we think, how could they let that happen? How could they give up? And maybe sometimes we don't think that way, but instead we think of the tragedy of life. And we have pity on them. Because maybe it's not their fault. Maybe something bad has happened that's out of their control. But yet here they still are. I think oftentimes we have pity, not compassion for beggars. And so our pity leads us to maybe drop some money in, or if I'm honest, I often don't do anything. Why? Because I don't trust them. I wouldn't trust them with the money to give them to do the right thing, to make the right decision, to use it in the right way. And so I don't. And pretty soon I've forgotten about them minutes later, right? Moving on with my life, with my coin in my pocket, doing the right thing. Right? And so that's our view of the beggar, I think, if we're honest. Maybe at times we act differently. Maybe at times we do help and care for. But it's certainly not enough, and it's certainly not always. But of course, we know God's different. God's always different in the way he sees us. See, God's knowledge, it's not God's assumption, it's God's knowledge of us. God knows our failures. He knows we're not good enough. He knows we got ourselves into this mess, that we, we really are those beggars. We made the mistakes that led to this position, to these faults, to this life. And yeah, there's tragedies in our life that have led us to this day and to this place. But no matter what, we are beggars. We bring nothing of value to God. Yeah, we've done some good things at times. We've been good. It's not enough. And yet God sees us and knows us and knows our heart. Really knows our heart our thoughts, our actions, our words. And yet his action is not pity, but compassion and love. And so Jesus came to this earth, died on a cross, forgives us our sins and our failures, has compassion in the tragedies of life, forgiveness for our failures. He feeds us his body, and his blood. He dresses us up in clothes of righteousness, his own clothes, his own works, the good he was able to do that we were not. And he lifts us up to walk with him, to be with him. See, Jesus He doesn't call us beggars, but he calls us children of God. That's who he sees us as. Because of what he's done for us, he sees us as his children of God. He's lavished love upon us and grace and mercy. And so we are children of God, and you hear me talk about that all the time, right? And yet, even in that identity, 
sometimes we take it the wrong way and we become not beggars, but braggers. We brag about our identity and our position in life. We become braggers. And we want to say to people, look what I've done. Or look who I've become. And as Christians, we're known for this, unfortunately. We're known for judgment. For saying, you need to act this way. You need to live this way if you want to come in this house. If you want to be a child of God. We so quickly have forgotten we were beggars that Jesus took in. And yet we so quickly want to decide who are the beggars that are worthy to come in and join our kingdom. We become braggers about how good we are. And we hold the moral high ground on all sorts of issues saying, we've got it right, people. Listen to us. We're children of God. Or we do the opposite. We either become braggers or we don't trust that what Jesus has done for us is enough. And so we get into this do better, be better life. We look at ourselves clothed in righteousness, righteousness, made clean and forgiven, called child of God, and we go, nope, I don't believe it's true. I've got to do something. I've got to earn this. I've got to be better. I've got to do better. Because because Jesus died for me, I've got to keep my end of the bargain. i got to be better. i got to do more. Just like this image here. Do more. You can win if you want. You've got to be better. You've got to do more. You can, you can do it if you want it, people. And so many... So many Christians have that attitude that I just need to do more. And if I just want it enough, then then Jesus will finally love me. And I can earn that title, child of God. But in Luther's Heidelberg Disputation, he reminds us of this and reminded of this all throughout the Bible. The law says, do this. And it is never done. Grace says, believe in this, and everything is already done. See, when we stop trying to fulfill the law, trying to do more, be more, be better, because we realize we can never have it done, then we can be children of God and rely on the grace of God that says, it's already done. You don't need to do more or be more or be better. It's already done. Live in that grace. See, what I hope you realize today is while we are children of God, we are beggars. To the day we die. That's why Luther kept that in his pocket. Think of all the truth and all the understanding he had, far more than I have. And yet he wanted to remember always that he was a beggar. When we remember we are beggars, when we remember that we are children of God, we know this is true. Amen.